This is a Texas Instruments TI-30 handheld scientific calculator. I acquired several of these from someone who was selling a, a box full of old calculators. Now all of these calculators that I got had problems with battery leakage and things. They were, they, they were kind of a mess, but I was able to get this one running. The reason I'm making this video is this calculator, the TI-30, does have an interesting place in the history of technology. Specifically, this is the calculator that brought the price down far enough to where pretty much anyone could now afford a scientific calculator. Scientific calculators had been around for a few years, but they were prohibitively expensive for most students. This is the world's first handheld digital calculator. This is the Hewlett Packard HP 35. The HP 35 was called the 35 because it had 35 buttons on it. It came out in 1972. When you think about the technology that was available in 1972, it really is quite remarkable that HP was able to create such a device. Up until the late 1960s, we were still using vacuum tubes in many consumer electronic devices. There were scientific calculators available before the HP 35, but they were really large, about the size of an old-fashioned typewriter, and they were really expensive. This is the Hewlett Packard 9100, which came out in 1968 at a price of $5,000. That translates to almost $37,000 in 2019 dollars. This was really a technology breakthrough, a breakthrough in microchip technology and miniaturization. The HP 35 came to market at a price of $395. $395 in 1972 is equal to over $2,400 in 2019. This is an inflation calculator that you can find all online, and I will include a link to that. But it's really quite amazing how expensive that calculator would be in today's money. When this product came to market, it created a lot of buzz. It was sort of like the introduction of the Apple iPhone back in 2007. Everybody was talking about this thing. Now, I was a student back then, and we all really wanted one of these. $395 back in 1972 was just prohibitively expensive. I didn't know any students who actually could afford to buy one of these things. I did know one guy who owned one. He was a physicist at the Bell Laboratories, and he had to pay for half of it. The thing was so expensive that the company was willing to pay for only half, and he had to pay for the other half. Now, uh, he wouldn't actually let me hold this thing or touch it or anything. He, he allowed me to watch him using it. That was as close as he would let me get to it because that was just so much money back then. Well, as the economists like to tell us, the cure for high prices is high prices, meaning that high prices imply high profit margins and high profit margins is going to attract competitors. It didn't take long for competition to emerge. In 1974, Texas Instruments introduced the SR50 which has essentially the same functions. It has the trig, log, and exponential functions. But this calculator came to market at a price of $170. Now, $170 in 1974 is $886 in 2019 money. But this represents a 63% price reduction from the HP 35. Still quite expensive, still beyond the reach of most students, but it's getting a lot better. The product number of a lot of the calculators of this age started with the letters SR. The SR stood for slide rule, and that's because that's what we were all used to using. That's really the only thing that was available before these came along. And they were slow, and they were cumbersome, and they were inaccurate, and you were prone to making mistakes. I spent many, many hours using slide rules and log logarithm lookup tables to, to do my calculations. One of the features of these early expensive calculators, including the SR50 and HP35, were double injection molded keys. These keys are actually made of two different colors of plastic, one injected inside of the other. And that way, these, uh, this writing will never wear off. It's actually embedded in the letter itself. In 1976, Texas Instruments came out with this calculator, the TI-30. And what was very special about this calculator is they dropped the price all the way to $25. Now, $25 in 1976 translates to $113 in 2019. 
That is a huge price reduction from the earlier calculators. That is less than 5% the price of the HP35 in real dollar terms. At $113, this was well within the reach of college students and even a lot of high school students. This is what democratized the scientific calculators. The TI-30 continued in production from 1976 to 1983, and in that time, it sold over 15 million of these. So that $25 price point really did make this the scientific calculator for every man, or at least every student who had to do advanced math. Now, the price reduction did not come without some compromises. First, the double injection molded keys are gone, replaced with just blank keys, and the functions are now printed on this plate that fits over the keys. It's much cheaper, of course. Now, it does mean that with enough use, you can wear this off. Another change is the switches are gone. The power switch and the degree radiance switch are gone. No more switches. Now it's all just buttons. The SR50 also had hyperbolic trig functions and factorials. Those were removed from the TI-30. However, the TR-30 did add parentheses, which made it easier to do complex calculations. And we are down to only eight digits. The most important factor in the cost reduction between the SR-50 and the TI-30 is the dramatic reduction in the component count, the number of electronic parts needed to make this thing. Now I've got another one here where I have to back off and everything is pretty much on this single board. And here's the whole calculator. The whole calculator has essentially been reduced to a single chip. By comparison, here is the, the SR50, and you can see the numerous components in here. Two large chips and several smaller chips, several discrete transistors, numerous resistors and capacitors. There's clearly quite a large number of components here. Two years later with the TI-30, Texas Instruments has managed to reduce all of that essentially down to the single chip. So the real breakthrough here is in the miniaturization and consolidation of parts. You'll notice there's a lot of spill of battery contents. This is potassium hydroxide reacting with the copper. And so we've got, uh, clearly I have some work to do on this keyboard. But the point is that all of this has been reduced to that. And that's mostly what got the price from $170 down to $25. One of the other ways that they saved cost on the TI-30 calculator was the battery. Now, all of the calculators of this era had rechargeable batteries, but in the case of the TI-30, they replaced the rechargeable battery with a simple 9-volt battery. Inexpensive, but unfortunately, these early LED displays were very energy inefficient, and it would quickly drain that 9-volt battery. So it didn't take long for a rechargeable battery pack to become available for this calculator. You can see here it's in power saving mode. It flashes just the, the decimal place to let you know the calculator is still on, but it's saving power. If you hit a key, of course it comes back. After the TI-30, all the calculators would have LCD displays, which were much more energy efficient. After the TI-30 went out of production in 1983, it continued to use the TI-30 part number to indicate a quality calculator at an economy price. And it came out with a whole series of TI-30 type calculators. And here's one, the TI-30X and the TI-30XA and the TI-30XS and the TI-30X2. B, the TI-30X2S, and so on. And if you go to Walmart or someplace like that, you, you will find some calculator with the part number TI-30 on it. The last time I looked, I could find some form of the TI-30 with a price as low as like $5. So TI-30 has become really synonymous with a good quality calculator that gives you the functionality that you need and at a price that you can easily afford. There are more advanced calculators available, but they of course carry higher price tags and 
they will include functions that you are rarely going to encounter. So price per performance, these are some of the best around. Of course, technology continues to march on, and here we have a simulated handheld calculator on a smartphone. This is a simulated graphing calculator program that I downloaded for free, and it turns my smartphone into a very advanced calculator. Now, the price reduction curve, of course, has continued. I think this may be the ultimate in low-cost calculator. This is from a company called Jot, J-O-T, and it was sold at Dollar Tree for one dollar. It has got all the log and trig functions, including hyperbolic functions, including factorials, including parentheses. It also has statistical calculations. All of this for one dollar. It is made as cheaply as you can possibly make something. The buttons are just mushy, and you take the thing apart, there isn't much in there. You cannot even really replace the battery. There's no battery door on here. You're you can replace them, but you got to take out all of these screws. It's quite a quite a job. Apparently, you're supposed to buy this thing and just use it till the batteries die, and then just throw the whole thing away and get another one. The day of the disposable scientific calculator. I'm not sure if that's progress or a sure sign of the apocalypse, but anyway, here it is: a one dollar scientific calculator. In summary, the technology to make instantaneous scientific calculations available at your fingertips has gone from very expensive esoteric equipment available only for well-funded professionals, has gone to being technology that's available to everyone for prices that are trivial. So adjusted to today's money, we start in 1968 with the Hewlett Packard 9100 at around $37,000 in today's money to 1972 with the Hewlett Packard 35 at $2,400 to the SR50 in 1974 at $886 to the TI30 in 1976 at $113. It declines from there, but this is the point where the calculator goes from being a very expensive tool for well-funded professionals to being a tool available to everyone. So that's what makes this particular machine important in the history of technology.